Hi there and welcome to the Barbara Young channel. My next project is a wrap dress and it's a simplicity pattern and it's 9224 which is this one. Now it is actually a, it says here, a Mimi G style. I presume that Mimi G is the model or whoever the person is that's modelling it, that must be Mimi G. I know that it is because on the bottom of the packet here it says sew along with Mimi G and I have actually had a look at that um, that sew along and it's quite interesting there's a few interesting tips in there to watch out for um, so yeah that was interesting to watch at the bottom there it says um, just says youtube.com simplicity video so I presume you put that in and then just have a look for Mimi G and that pattern and um, you get a sew along with Mimi G um, so I thought I'd have a go at this one. It looks quite nice. It's a nice basic wrap dress and it doesn't look like it's um, going to be over complicated. I certainly hope not anyway. So better get on with it really. But first of all, let's have a look at the fabric. What am I going to use for this? Well, it says on the back here, because I did read it, honestly, what does it say? It says about the type of fabrics can be some things like um, linen, soft cotton, chambray, sorry, chambray, silky types, silky, mm, batics, extra fabric needed to match plaids, stripes or one-way design um, fabrics. And I've gone for a um, chambray, I, I presume that's how you pronounce it, if it's not, please let me know how I should be pronouncing it, because that's what I think. And I've gone for this a blue. Um, well, it's sort of a, it is a sort of blue, sort of like a slight turquoisey colour. Can't really tell, and I can't really say which way is the right way or the wrong way because I think it basically looks the same. And being a chambray, it's got more drape on it than I'd expect normally. This sort of slightly heavier material. It's, it's not. It's not heavyweight, but it's definitely not a light material, it's that medium one, but got the nicest drape to it. So I'm quite happy with that, so it's not going to be too stiff, hopefully. It seems stiffer than a cotton, but not, no, should I say, it seems heavier than a cotton, but not as stiff. But then it is a cotton. I don't know. It's a chambray. But first of all, I need to do a mock-up, which will be with something from the pile here. Um, to do the mock-up. Um, it doesn't matter if it's not quite the same sort of drape and stuff. I just need to understand how the different parts of it go together so I understand what I'm doing when I'm trying to get those pieces matched up and that. So I think first of all I should have a quick look at the instructions. So the instructions don't look too harsh. I mean we've got everything that we need to have. We've got four requisite pages of which there's instructions on every one of them. Marvellous. I have got a blank page like normal, um, which is, uh, I don't know, I can't put my notes in it. Well, I can, I'll just write notes on it as I go if I feel I need to make a note about anything. I mean, starting with the uh, page one, which basically page one is everything about the details. <coughs> um, ten pattern pieces, uh, which includes um, a piece that is called a right front band and on here there go the um, actual pattern pieces <clears throat> on here uh, if you can see that it shows it as having a little bit of a stripe as an extra piece of material a contrast material um, which is just on there to give it more effect like that um, I'm not going to be doing that little effect it doesn't make any difference to the um, to the uh, dress at all, I don't think. We've got our instructions on how to um, do the layout, cutting layouts and that. <coughs> and then you've got the sort of general sort of what can you do, what you've got, you got to do, you know, you're tucking under the instructions, cutting it out, laying the material on there, you know, and, and getting all sort of neatened up. Um, and that is page one. So page two is where we really start and yeah it's quite big quite big instructions 
you know, it's, it's, it's quite well laid out and uh, each one is another one step after another. So it looks like with this we start with a bit of stay stitching for the front pieces. On this, the what is the arm and front section is all cut in one. So you have a left piece and a right piece. What I do find odd is according to this is that the back piece is two pieces and you stitch it down the middle. I would have thought you would have cut it on the fold and opened it out. But never mind, that's the way they've done it. Again, it has the sleeve part in with that main body bit. So you don't have any separate sleeves, which is great because you're not going to mess about with doing sleeves. So the sleeves are going to be quite a baggy sleeve. It just look like that on the, on the picture, which is great. It's a nice open sleeve. Um, so first of all, a bit of stay stitching on the on the front pieces, and then there's a couple of tie pieces you've got to put in on the front. Cut um, two pieces of ribbon, it says, but I presume you can use whatever you fancy. Um, on outside, pin end of one piece to left bodice front and sleeve, placing lower edge of ribbon large dart based on inside pin end of remaining piece. To right bodice front and sleeve over small dot base. I think what these are looking at it is when you tie it up you want to be able to tie the other end on the inside so I think that's what they're for for tying it on the inside before you wrap the dress over to um, tie the other side. Um, and then it goes on about that band piece if you're going to put that on there I'm not. Then it's um, stitching centre back seams together, so you put the backs together and then stitch up the what is the shoulder, basically what will be the shoulder sleeve, so from here down to there, so you, you're fixing it together at the tops, the front and the backs, by the looks of it. Right sides together, right edges, pin by the front sleeves, bodies back sleeves, at shoulder edges, matching notches, stitch. Okay, yeah. Then, <clears throat> then there's obviously the neck band and the, um, the front facing pieces. So on this, where that neck piece comes round, there's going to be a facing piece on there by the looks of it. It goes all the way round. Again, that's the same sort of thing. You, you stitch the three parts together, interfaced as well, by the way, and then you do your edge, however you do that, fold over, overlock, casting, whatever, cast stitch is it? I can't remember now. <clears throat> and then you put it on, you know, you trim it and then turn it through. Uh, a bit of under stitching there it says. Base together and then you have to put a little bit of a basting stitch just to hold it in at the bottom by the looks of it, by where it comes down on the bottom of the of the top bodice section and then you stitch the armhole pieces so you're going to stitch that bit next after that so you've effectively got the top bodice section and then we move on to page three which is actually the sleeve this is to, to finish that sleeve off looks like what we've got to do is you've got to turn it over inside out to um, cover that raw edge and then turn it through and then turn it back on itself once it's once we've done it so you get this so we get this turnover section here on the sleeve by the looks of it that's what it looks like so you turn it inside to hide it like you normally would but wider than normal and then you turn it back on itself afterwards to give that um, that cuff sort of detail on there. That's a little bit different. I like that. And then we're on to the, um, the skirt sections and doing the, the tie band piece. Looks like I need two of them and they get fixed on. It looks like one of them is see, on outside pin remaining tie end to skirt right front cross facing matching small dots stitching facing cross tie fold fold from fold line trim tie and then fold team that yeah looks like what they're doing is they're, they're putting the tie piece on like that so it goes out 
and then stitching it and then bringing it back and stitching it again so you hide the raw edge on there. <clears throat> and then it's um, put the front and back skirt pieces together and then you've got to attach them to the bodice so that thing of where you got one upside down, one downside up. It'll look more sensible when I get to it I suppose. Um, a couple of little oddities here. It sounds like this skirt piece is longer than the um, than the bodice piece, and it looks like it's done that way on purpose. I imagine we've got some turnover, like seam edging or something to do. So that's possibly why they've left it so it's a bit longer, so you can actually create a seam edge um, somewhere on that. It looks like some elastic goes in there, so you're creating a casing band for the elastic to go in for the waistband. That'd be a bit tricky I suppose and it's a case of being careful about how much elastic to put in there. Do I want it tight or want it quite loose? Um, yes and then we've got to turn over the edging to... Uh, I've got to turn over this edging here so that we cover up that, that edge piece on the bottom of the skirt section. And then there's a hemming. Now it looks like this hem section is a little bit odd. I think it's because what they're trying to do is create a mitered corner on the edging. But it looks like a slightly odd way of doing it. But I mean, I suppose as long as it works, I'll give it a try and see what happens. So there we go. Instructions for the um, 9224 Simplicity Mimi G style wrap dress. Better get my material ready, starting with my mock up, and um, see how it comes out. Oh, did I mention the size? Now I've had a quick look at the uh, sizing on there, on the, the back of the pattern packet, and I had a quick look actually on here and I've determined that I'm going to try size 12 on this. It looks like there's a reasonable amount of ease in this, so I think that will sit just fine. There you go. You know, it's got the price on the back of here. It says it's $22.95. MSRP, I presume that's um, US dollars, that is. I don't know what that would be for the UK. And this pattern's from 2021, so it's a recent one. So. Yeah, better go on with it. I've got all my pattern pieces now cut out and I've actually got all the material cut out as well and uh, ready to go with the mock-up that is. Now what I've noticed is that the pieces are actually quite large. Um, I'm only doing a size 12 but let me just grab this piece. As you can see because the arm and the whole thing is all in one then that's, that's a large piece in itself. I, I know you've got the seam allowance in there which is actually quite large. It's a two centimeter 20 mil seam allowance which is actually huge for seam allowance. Normally I wouldn't expect seam allowance to be any more than 15 mil but these these are large so it's a lot of material in there for each piece and the skirt pieces are the same. They're really quite large. There's not a lot of shaping to this necessarily which is great so um, yeah start putting it together I think and uh, see how it comes out. Well it's slowly coming together I did some stay stitching as it said on the front and then after that there were a couple of tie pieces to put on. Where are they? This is for internal ties for the, for the top section and then it says to basically do the back seam put the two back pieces together and do the, sh what is the shoulder sleeve? As you can see, shoulder sleeve seam on both sides. So we've basically got the front and back together so far. Um, and yeah, it definitely looks like it's quite a uh, a roomy sort of dress. So um, yeah, next up is the neck band and the neck piece. So get that done and get that on, which was always going to be the trickier bit because it always is the trickier bit so blast on with that and see how it goes. Well I've done the neckband piece 
like you normally do, you stitch the two pieces together, the three bits, two long front bits and the actual neck band piece, stitch them together and then lay them against the actual item and garment and obviously stitch all the way around and then trim and notch your seam. I haven't finished that properly because it is just a mock-up, I just wanted to do it enough so I could um, see how it goes on and then turn the whole thing over like you do and press it down so you've got a nice neck band that runs all the way, well all the way around from the front all the way around the neck and down the other side and then it actually says in the instructions to baste the raw edges and I'm taking it's talking about this edge here where the band meets the bottom edge of the front and the reason I say it's got to be that one because even though this edge here is raw that one should have been finished off it's basically once you put the, the piece together before you attach it to the main garment you finish that back edge off it does say with um, actually to turn it over and do a very narrow almost like a rolled hem on this edge to tie that edge up but um, you probably get away with maybe overlocking it or zigzagging it or maybe in, as I like to do to put some bias binding on there and, and trim that, neaten that edge off that way it's a possibility but uh, that would leave us with only this edge here being the raw edge so I basted that in there but what it doesn't show, what it doesn't tell you, is once you've turned this over to make it all match up, you end up with this knobbly bit sticking out because that's part of the seam allowance that's now sitting in there. Um, I might trim that off, might just leave it for now just to see how it works. But basically, it is slowly coming together. Now after a quick scan of the instructions, I realised that it does say about doing these uh, sleeve cuffs. Now, if it was just hemming it up like normal, then I'd think, yeah, that's not a problem, I'll just leave that and not worry about it. But they've got a bit of a different hem, I suppose, call it. Got this little detail there. So what I've done is I've just um, pressed over the, the edge by a small amount, as it says, and then I've got to turn this in to the there's I've drawn a line on the back here if I can do that fight and with this um, yeah where's that line gone um, uh, there we go and what it does is something a bit like that so you've got this thick hem on there then I need to stitch this round and then I've got to turn it through um, shall I put a pin in there? No. Let's attempt this on the fly as it were. And then once I'd stitched it, then I would bring the whole sleeve through and then turn this back again on itself to create this like envelope, this, this wide edge piece. I'll stitch it up and then we'll have a look. So now that I've turned this cuff over, you can see it's a really wide um, hem there but there's a reason for that um, according to the instructions and what I do is I turn it the right way through like that and you can see I've used again black um, thread so I can see where I'm sewing I always do with a mock-up so I can just see what's going on um, obviously when I sew it for real and the good stuff I will use um, good material um, so I can tell yeah well I hopefully it's good material but coloured thread that matches um, but then what I do is then take this and just turn it over so basically it just covers that um, that stitch line and hopefully what I have then is that nice detail where you've got this edging you know when it's in, in there you've got that little sort of pocket edge I don't know how you describe that and then just ditch stitch at top and bottom to hold it in place and that should make a nice cuff detail which is is different I like that I must admit so as you can see I've got the top section done got this sleeve detail done and actually there's it's quite a nice sort of baggy roomy you know oversized slightly sort of feel to it the there's an inner tie piece there that I have put in tacked in 
because uh, I want to see how that sits. And this is basically the top piece, the bodice bit. The outer tie piece fits onto the skirt section, as it were, but I haven't made that bit yet, just the top piece, which, yeah, seems quite nice. And this is quite roomy because, you know, I've got bulky clothing on underneath this, so, yeah, it's coming on quite well. Well, that's the skirt section done. It comes in three panels. You've got the right side, that's the right panel, with the uh, one of the tags on, well, the you know the tie tags. That's the cent that's the centre back. So that's the centre back piece there, and the left front. And now the tie bit goes in between the back and the front panel because this is the underside when it overlaps. It'll come over on top of that. Um, first thing to do was to have tied up these edges, put a seam on a hemline, sort of on the that side edge on both sides. Now this edge here, because this has an angle to it, let me show this. That angle means that as we come down to the bottom of this seam, there's this odd little split detail that I've had to take into account of. And I imagine that when it comes to sorting out the hemming, which would be that strange odd thing of turning it up and creating this, um, I think it's like a, um, a mitered corner edgings and stuff that's going to be taken into account of down there when I do that. But you see it's quite long and I imagine it seems longer than it should be. I mean, I just put it round me. There's a lot of material in this. I know it wraps over, but even to me it seems like there's a lot more wrap over than possibly need, but well, find out once I get the uh, top bit on, which is actually comes next. That's what I've got to do. Put this piece onto the top body section and then we'll really get to uh, see how it's working out. Well it's certainly come together now that I managed to get the, uh, the skirt section onto the bodice piece and basically it's the case of stitching along the seam line to put them together and then stitching just under that to create a channel the reason for that channel is the elastic is going to go into there. Now I've not finished off or done anything with these edge pieces because that comes next. Um, but I imagine there's there's some way of, I think it's to, to, to turn this, stitch it, so you, you're stitching and holding that piece in there or something like that. I've not really looked at it, but you know I'm almost ready to go on to that next stage. And then once I've tidied that up, I think it's actually the hemming, which is... Um, well, it looks a little bit odd, but I can sort of understand what it's saying, and it's really there to create a nice deep hem. So you turn that over quite a bit to on there, but with like mitered corners or to, to hide the edges. So, um, yeah, I've finished doing what I'm doing with this waistband piece, and then it's uh, hemming it up. And then effectively that is the mock-up done, and gives me a darn good idea of how the thing goes together and how it's likely to fit. I know this material is not very good. It's This is very lightweight. It tends to stretch out. It's it's an old duvet cover. Um, it's gone rather thin and it's very worn and it's not very good, but it does give me an idea of what the garment's likely to be like. So that's why I've used it. Anyway, enough fun talking. Let's get on and see if I can get this, uh, get this mock-up finished. Well, the mock-up is done, as you can see. Um, and yeah, seems quite nice actually. I mean, it looks like a finished garment, but it's not really. There's all the inner seams that are right messy on the inside. Wouldn't look on the inside if I were you. But basically, as far as understanding how it goes together and the style of it, and does this size really fit? I think, yeah, it does. These sleeves are quite like this, this sort of very relaxed, sort of slouchy sort of feel to it. It's very sort of open, it's not overly tight or anything. You've got this waistband piece where there's the elastic. i um, got question marks about um, how that goes in. I might see if I can maybe do it, put it in in a slightly different way. Um, and the way the ties fix on, you've got a couple of ties on the inside as well, just don't seem to be anchored very well. So I might have a little bit of a look at that and see if I can make a slight amendment to it just to make it a bit more secure. The other thing with it is the length. Now the length is lovely. As you can see that's that's my knee just there. So it comes down to just above the knee. Which actually 
it's a nice length but I don't want it to be quite as long as that so I'm going to take it up probably I don't know three inches or something like that not too much but enough to just bring it up a bit so it's not quite as long um, so that's what I'm going to do so what I'll have to do is amend the uh, the actual uh, pattern pieces now to adjust the skirt I've had to have a look at the the length of it now on all the three pieces there isn't um, any lines for adjusting the length so what I've done is I put it on this one it says here that this is the line for the hip for the hip line so what I've done is just below that I've just put on marked a double line for um, for being able to adjust the length and then I've just carried that along on all the three pieces that make up the skirt section and then now I'm just going to chop that and shorten it um, to what I want and that way I'll have a slightly shorter skirt section which I think will fit better at least suit me better for what I want so I'm going to get on and adjust this and then I can possibly start looking at getting the uh, actual good material out. I've uh, mended my pattern pieces and uh, I've wrecked the notes up and made any notes I want to on, on my instructions so my material's ready I think basically I'm ready to get going with this so get the pattern pieces pinned on get the material cut out and get sewing pieces now cut out marked up and ready to go so I am literally ready to start sewing It is slowly coming together got the front and the back pieces together um, got the shoulder seams and they seem to be all right um, didn't seem to take too long to get to this part so obviously cutting out all the marking up that does take quite a bit of time but once I started sewing it seems to be coming on right now there's a tie piece that ties in you've got two bits for tying in on the inside once the whole thing is constructed and I've decided to use this stuff. Now this is a form of um, binding tape that you'd put round on the edge. You know, there's no stretch in it. Um, and I thought I wanted something nice on the inside, so I put that on there as that tie piece. So I've got two bits, two long pieces for the tie sections. Now I've got to do the neckband, which actually I have started. So I sewn the the neckband piece and these two the pieces that will be the facing pieces for this front section together and then i was trying to decide how i was going to finish it off um because the the one edge obviously it's raw and you've got to cover that to make sure that once it's turned in that it's, it's not going to fray at all and i didn't want to just have a zigzag edge so i don't really like that i don't think it looks very nice but i didn't want to either put a bias binding tape over it, you put it on, you fold it over that. So I decided to actually use some of this stuff on the edge as well. Now the observant of you will notice that this is effectively on the wrong side. That is the interfacing. Now I had a decision to make. When I put this on, how did I want that to look? Now 
I could have decided on two things, either to turn this edge up and then to have this on this front edge. So you'd see it once if the garment's not worn. But I thought, no, I want to make it a little more hidden, I suppose. So once this is actually in the garment, so this will be in the garment, we'll sit a bit like that. You won't really see it. This side you won't see because it's, it's tucked in. So you won't actually see this, except for the fact if it was to turn over or the garment wasn't being worn, you get this little peak of this nice little um, heart-shaped binding on there, which I think is quite nice because it's a nice little hidden detail. But it finishes off this edge nicely so it's not, not a raw edge. So yeah, that's what I've gone with. Just need to actually put this in the garment now and uh, see where we are with it. Now that the skirt section is finished and uh, that's looking all right, um, I took my time over this, even though there's just literally two um, tie bands and two seams to stitch, um, I wanted it to look right. And I was a little concerned about um, stability, maybe. I don't know if that's the right word to use. Anyway, with my seams, what I've done is I stitched them, then um, pressed them open and then turned them in again on themselves and then stitched them down a second time so as to uh, really hide those ends without having to do a zigzag or trim them or anything else. And that's quite nice, works quite well. I don't know what that's called, that type of seaming, but you end up with this double line on the outside, which I quite like. Now, I've used that to my advantage in putting one of the um, uh, ties in because otherwise you've just got one seam that you're stitching to to hold that in. I didn't feel it'd be strong enough. So when I've turned this one over, this side, I've turned in what was sticking out of the end of that tag. So it's stitched there as well. And on this, then when I've stitched this side, I've stitched it again on this side. So it's not just one stitch to hold this whole tag in, there's, there's multiple, so it gives it more anchor point. And on the other one, what I've done is, what you do is you start off like that, you stitch it in, and then you turn it back on itself, but with only like one of the stitching, it didn't seem to anchor very well. So what I've effectively done, as you can see there, I've got three stitch lines, and it's across quite a wide area, so there's a lot more holding that. Now this bit here gets folded back on itself at some point and you end up with it like that. So that is hidden and this sticks out but there's a lot more anchorage on there than what it would have been otherwise it's two very small um, bits of uh, sewing to hold them in place and I just didn't like that. I like these tie pieces to be secure. Oh, there's not no good pulling on that to tie it up and then one of them comes off, is it? It's uh, just not on. So <laughs> there we go, that's the skirt section finished. So now I've got to attach it to the, to the top section. Having read the instructions and done a mock-up, um, I've now got to put in the skirt section onto the top section and it is fairly simple. The only issue I have with it is that when you sew it, you sew in your line that you've got and then you sew in another line, um, another stitch line a bit closer to the edge within the seam allowance to create the channel for uh, the elastic. But then it just sits there, it doesn't get held down in any way. It would literally be zigzag the edge to finish it off and then it just it's just there. But again I'm not very keen on that idea because it just doesn't feel that secure to me. I'm not happy with how well that will stay together long term. So what I'm going to do, instead of doing that, I'm actually going to French seam this uh, this hem, this, this joint, this seam here, um, and try and give it a bit more structure in the construction because I want it to hold properly. And in French seaming it, because you create a channel by its very nature, I'll have a channel be able to put in there. And if I sew that French seam down so it's not loose, so it's sat flat, then uh, hopefully it'll be stronger 
and more capable of doing the job that it's meant to. Of course that's completely outside of the bounds of what the instructions are so um, I did a little practice for it and hopefully I'll be able to get and do it on the main garment so I better get on with it because that will take a bit of time I imagine to make sure I get that right. Finally managed to get the waistband sorted, the elastication. Now when I stitched these two together I, as I said, did it as a um, French seam and what I end up with is the seam that's on the inside I actually stitched it down so from the outside you've got the top is that's the seam and then that's the stitched line where I stitched it down to hold it in position now the thing with doing it that way <coughs> means that there's actually less gap in that channel than what it says so it's, I think it says on the instructions to use um, one and a half centimetre um, elastic but with this um, you end up with quite a small channel so it's, I've ended up using I think it's six or seven mil wide um, elastic but that seems good enough for me I mean I'm quite happy with that seems to come out all right um, getting it through that was a bit of a nightmare because it's such a long channel it really doesn't want to go through there easily but I did manage to get it in in there in the end. <clears throat> so having done the waist part and stitched up the top to the bottom section it's pretty much done so the only thing left to do now really is uh, the hem which involves this is the side piece where it overlaps I've got to obviously bring that in to make it neat and then do the hem which is um, a really wide turnover like that it's got quite a wide turn so that's basically all that I've got to do to finish it but in doing this turnover there's a bit of a fancy technique for turning this really I suppose to get that sort of a bit like a mitered corner type look to that finish so that is that's all I've got to do all I've got to do I say but I mean I'm not quite sure how long that takes so I better get on with this and um, hopefully or will be done. Just so this makes sense, what I've done is this is the the, um, the side piece that's turned in and this is the bottom hem and it's just turned down a bit. This is turned outwards so this is right sides together and I've just stitched along that little bit where it's on the actual fold line and then what I do is basically take this and turn it through Get me, um, use that as my uh, poker to put it in there to turn that through and now I have that's that's the outside and that's the inside and then eventually what we'll do is this will be stitched down along here and all along the hemline on near to this edge but that will give a nice even concealed edge there it's nice and neat and on the outside when you have the stitch in it'll just come down and then angle and carry on without there being anything in the corner edge there now this side is a little bit trickier this is the, the top and that's the side and then this is actually the bottom that that odd slanted angle on the bottom front now the way that this crosses over I've just um, pressed it as it sort of folded over flat but it's not how it goes what I need to do now is open this out take this corner and where it's creased there I need to hold it down and then sort of pinch it until they sort of meet up nice and neatly so that this this edge here meets up nice and neat and then what I've got to do is basically um, put a mark line on here there turn this over that way put another mark line on there and then what I've got to do then is take this out where I've made those two lines I've got to join them up so that when I then stitch along that angle where I've made the lines and that way when I turn it through I will have a, um, a type of mitered corner I'll get it stitched up and then uh, you'll see how it comes out Having matched those uh, two lines up that I'd drawn, I'd drawn on this side and then I'd matched them up, 
stitched along that diagonal, just trimmed off the uh, excess and now all I have to do is turn this the right way through, put that in there and what I end up with is on the outside you see that and on the inside you see that which is brilliant it's come out really lovely that and there's one more actual seam to finish off and that's um that's this one where the angled one meets the uh, um the straight back which i now have to deal with finally it is finished so let's have a look and see how it fits and as you can see it is really quite a nice uh, dress I did actually quite enjoy making it it's not a, a difficult design it's quite a simple design really there's not too much to it um, the top is quite simple because it's uh, the sleeves are part of the top section so really there's not a great deal to go wrong with this there are a few things that obviously I changed on it but I think overall that the top is well sorry the the dress has come out real well the top is a little shorter than maybe I wanted but um, a lot and the skirt bit was a bit longer but I shortened that and the overall effect has come out really really nicely I do love it I love the fit and it just it looks real nice in this uh, in this light blue chambray that I've used now in doing this obviously I did make a few changes to uh, to the garment I mean started with this uh, uh, this mock-up in yellow that um, looks a bit of a rag because it is but in doing this it gave me the consideration to make those few alterations that I feel I needed to make to uh, to make it right as it were um, which one included first of all the, one of the important things that I wanted to do was to anchor these um, ties now the inner ties they seemed all right with the exception of this inner tie I would like to anchor this inner tie a bit more and I do think that wider tie piece that you use the better but yeah I think that needs a bit more anchorage in there the other side is fine because of the way it comes through from the edge there so I'm not worried about the anchorage there and then on oh, where's the other one that one as well I, I anchored down a bit more just by the way that I did the seams on these um, meant that that got anchored in a little bit better so I'm more confident in tying this up than I was with the mock-up because they are anchored in better the sleeves I love that little turnover that you get on them you could make that bigger if you really wanted to it's a much bigger turnover um, and then obviously this neckband piece now obviously I've got that little bit of hidden detail um, which you could actually put I suppose I should have put it on the outside but um, maybe next time but yeah it has come out really nice and of course I shortened it because um, I didn't like the length of it I do like um, things like this these dresses should be just that a little bit shorter um, just find it's more wearable and I can wear it with something else underneath if needed and the way you do these these turns at the bottom for this wide hem that's really nice so all in all a brilliant make um, it came out really nice and I think I'm gonna really enjoy wearing that the materials lovely it um, feels like it might be a bit heavy but it, it's not it's it's actually really quite a nice lightweight uh, material and fits really lovely on me even actually to the extent where looking at the picture and looking the way it's meant to have like a certain amount of draped it I reckon I could have gone up a size so I would say it's one of those garments that once you've worked out what size you want make the next size up um, might sound counterintuitive but I think it will give a better sort of drape to it then so there you go simplicity 9224 the uh, Mimi G style uh, wrap dress I think that's come out absolutely lovely Thank you very much for watching my video. I look forward to seeing my next video. Bye.